On January 2nd, 2015, the long-standing world record for TOG was smashed when Kenneth Westerfeld of College Point, New York, landed a 28.8-pound blackfish, appropriately named TOGzilla. The Fisherman Magazine sat down with Ken to hear the whole story in his words. This is the first in a three-part series. I saw some pictures of huge blackfish, um, 17, 19, 20 pound blackfish. And uh, I reached out to the fellas in the pictures with these huge fish and picked their brain. And I had to know where they were catching these fish. Um, my friend Larry replied, and uh, we had become friends from that time on. Uh, he let me in on the secret that it was Ocean City, Maryland, and that it was uh, a party boat called the Morning Star. So uh, there began my quest for a very large double-digit male tog trophy to put on my wall. And... Um, it came later that we met Kane, the charter captain who I, I sailed with. Um, Kane was originally Monty Hawkins' mate on the Morning Star, and uh, his career progressed from there, and he opened up a six-pack charter business and also runs the, uh, the federal pilot boat in that area. So. Uh, through the course of years and uh, conversations, I learned about Kane, and I went down there and had a really excellent trip with him. My friend caught a 15-pound female blackfish our first time out with Kane, and we caught an easy limit. And it was very exciting. So I looked forward to going back with him again. And the following year, we had two fantastic trips with Kane and at that point I said to Captain Kane the first weekend of January is mine for life and there you have it so it's my annual TOG trophy hunt that I drive the five hours to Ocean City Maryland and it's a big undertaking costs a few bucks Definitely get grief from the misses about it. But, uh, you know, I hang around with a bunch of guys who are as passionate about blackfish as I am. And, uh, you know, I have a core group of friends, and we go down there regularly, once a year. And that's it. We look forward to it every year. Captain Monty Hawkins uh, puts out an email and all his customers are on this email list. And on his weekly email, it always repetitively talks about what you should bring on his trip to prepare. And, um, you know, blackfish fishing is something that takes place in the winter when it's cold and it's nasty and you don't get a lot of really nice days on the water. You know, and me for one, I have to pick my days very carefully because I have physical dis disabilities. Um, I have uh, injuries that I sustained on the job as an officer with the MTA. I uh, took a bad fall uh, going to assist a stranded motorist on the, on the toll plaza where I was working. And uh, I tore up the ligaments in my knee. I had a meniscus repair surgery. I had an ACL reconstruction surgery. I um, have a dead person's ligament in my left knee, you know, that I didn't start out with. And uh, the, the post-operative MRIs actually shows that I have tears in my ACL, uh, which wasn't mine, and as well as my meniscus. Um, these ligaments don't heal. So one day I'm going to have to do a knee replacement, but the doctors tell me I'm too young right now. 
Uh, I also have titanium and plastic in my lower back because of these injuries uh, favoring my weight to one side. My discs in my lower back became herniated and I have pinched nerves that cause me a lot of pain and make me very uncomfortable. So for me, preparation for such a trip is a lengthy process. It's a process of watching the weather forecasts very closely. It's a, a process of knowing that you know, I have all the materials that I need, including my knee brace and my back brace, um, that I have pain medication with me if I need it. Um, aside from just the tackle that you would bring along, which we require sinkers, obviously, you know, all the different rigs that I tie for the many different situations that uh, confront you in black fishing. Um, you know, I like to have my rods rigged up ahead of time. You need warm clothes. You need foul weather gear. You need warm boots. Um, you need everything that's going to keep you comfortable in uh, a physically challenging environment. And uh, luckily, the, the two days that we got to fish with Kane this year were absolutely pristine. They were just so beautiful. Uh, I couldn't have asked for better days, especially Friday when we caught the, when I caught the big fish. Um, it was like a day made in heaven, you know, specifically. Uh, the wind was supposed to gust up to 20. That wind never came. It, it stayed so flat calm all day. And um, the sky was absolutely beautiful. The water flat. Um, the air was uh, mid, low to mid 40s, which to me, you know, this time of year, it feels like Bermuda, uh, <laughs> low to mid 40s. So, uh, you know, I, I've certainly fished in colder conditions and um, it was very nice to be in Ocean City that weekend. You know, first of all, breaking the inlet, the excitement level is up. Everybody is, you know, this is this is the moment we've been waiting for, you know. Uh, you think about it all year. Uh, so there's a lot of pomp and circumstance leading up to that moment that day. And uh, especially when you're blessed with the right weather, you know. So the first thing that everybody noticed that morning is that there was barely a puff of wind and um, it was a flat, calm ocean, and it was a beautiful morning, and it wasn't even that cold. Um, that was the first thing. Now, uh, me, having run my own boat in the past, uh, I, I don't anymore. I can't anymore because of my disabilities, at least not alone. But um, I pay attention to detail, and that's one thing that I say about fishing and fishermen. It's that the guy who pays the most attention to detail is the guy who's gonna catch the most fish on the boat. And I live my life by those words. Um, so when we broke that inlet, I took notice of the surface temperature, which was just below 43 degrees. And I made comment to the captain that, you know, uh, it's about the same temperature up further north where, where I come from right now, you know, which I expected it to be warmer down south. But when we actually did get out to the fishing grounds, the temperature shot up to about 48, you know. Um, I will say that we traveled about an hour and a half out of the inlet. I'm not going to say in which direction. I'm certainly not going to burn the captain's spots. Um, but... Um, it was, uh, condition-wise, a, a, a day from heaven. And uh, you couldn't have asked for better. And I was, for one, you know, uh, considering my disabilities, I was very, very happy to be in that position. The piece of bottom where I caught the actual record fish, I don't think it was our first drop. I think it was our second drop in the area. And, um, you know, conditions were so nice that, you know, it wasn't a big factor 
as far as uh, having to adjust or adapt any of your presentation all that much. Um, there were moments where I was fishing with six ounces. There were moments where I was fishing with eight ounces. It didn't make all that much difference, really. Um, I, I was holding well enough with six, but sometimes a flat eight is good. You know, it just kind of holds the bottom nice and solid. And, uh, you know, if you don't want it to move around, obviously it sits, it stays put better. Um, and sometimes that is very instrumental in getting the right bite from a big fish too, you know, just kind of keeping things still. I see guys working the rod a little too much um, in most places I go, you know. I mean, a little bit of movement is okay to attract the fish, but I, for one, am not a guy who believes in, in continuous movement. I think that a big, old, wise blackfish is a, is a very wary fish, and uh, I think they need a presentation that appears very natural. But um, uh, we had a little bit of current, and like I said, it, it was comfortable holding with six to eight. Um, as far as the way I rigged, I chose a snafu, and a snafu rig is a, is a two-hook rig that uh, is reported to be, have been originated on the Ocean Eagle party boat out of Sheepshead Bay and is now widely used by tog fishermen everywhere. Um, some days it's my favorite rig and some days I have other favorites, but uh, I thought that was a good choice because I like to go with two hooks in a whole crab myself. You know, uh, a lot of guys like to fish pieces, and pieces are okay uh, if you have no tide and, you know, you want to get that scent on the bottom uh, permeating around the area. Uh, you know, that means cutting a crab in half, fishing pieces. So uh, there are times well, to do that. There's a time and a reason for everything. But personally, I've caught most of my large double digit blackfish on a whole crab presentation. And that's the way I prefer to fish. That's the way I like to fish. I like two hooks in a whole crab. Well, I use equipment from uh, a lot of different manufacturers, but um, the stuff that I favor, I have uh, a couple of different setups that I employ regularly for blackfish. Um, my main setup happened to be in my hands when I hooked this fish. Um, I have a uh, custom Calstar 7 foot 2 and I didn't have this rod built myself. Um, I bought it used from a friend and he didn't explain what model blank it is but I've been told that it's an L blank. Uh, it's a really nice custom rod. It has the ultimate perfect action for this type of black fishing. It has a fast, soft tip, but the blank loads up with tons of power really quick. And it's definitely a tool that was instrumental in the capture of this fish. I think if I was fishing any other rod, or potentially a lighter rod, I would not have bested this fish. Um, the reel, in this case, I have a pair of Shimano Torium 14s. And, um, you know, a lot of people have uh, some bad words for that particular model. Um, certainly there's a couple of plastic parts in there but, you know, dollar for dollar, I think it's a really good reel, and I really love the Shimano product just for the drag systems alone. The drags are very smooth in, in a Shimano reel, in all of them. And uh, that's one thing that I really appreciate about that product. Um, it's the perfect size, 
And again, it's not heavy. It's not a heavy reel. Um, it's a star drag, and I, I prefer a star drag as opposed to a lever drag for a blackfish presentation. Um, I just feel like I have more control over being able to thumb adjust the drag in the course of fighting the fish. So um, I like it a lot for that reason. Um, what more can I say about it? It's lightweight, which, you know, for me, I need gear that's lightweight because of my injuries. I can't hold anything particularly heavy, heavy for too long. Uh, so, you know, personally for me, that's an important factor. Um, I'm not as young and healthy as I used to be. Um, what more can I say about that reel? I have two. <laughs> I, I, I love them. I do. I really do. Um, and I think very often, in fact, it was a topic uh, lately on my own uh, fishing group on Facebook. I have a, a fishing page, uh, New York City, Long Island Fishing Alliance. Feel free to join. Uh, and I was in search of what would be the ultimate blackfish reel in the case that I, I would have to retire one of the ones that I have. Uh, so I still haven't really made a firm determination on what that would be. But uh, regardless, I digress back to the story. Um, I have those reels spooled up with 50 pound test power pro braid which I also have a lot of faith in. I've uh, used it almost exclusively over the years. I, I have tried one or two other types of braid and I went right back to the Power Pro. I just feel good about it, feel comfortable with it. Um, if a spool of that line gets old, I'll, I'll reel it back onto another uh, uh, reel, a spool, and I'll just use the opposite side until that wears, you know. So uh, I get a lot of uh, longevity and wear and tear and use out of a spool of Power Pro, and I really like the product, I really like the company. Um, aside from that, I believe very strongly in fluorocarbon. Uh, a great fisherman who spends a lot of time on uh, Monty's uh, Morning Star in Ocean City clued me into the fact that the water there is oceanic and it's so pristine and gin clear. The tog there have a really good sight capability. So I find that using fluorocarbon is a must. It's instrumental. A lot of people say tog have bad eyesight. Well, when you're in the cleanest, clearest of water conditions, eyesight gets a lot better apparently. So uh, I am a firm believer in using fluorocarbon leader. And I don't only use it for my hook leaders, I use it for my entire shock leader too. Uh, hooks, mm, I'm a Gamagatsu fan from way back, you know. Uh, pretty much every application that I participate in on the water, I employ Gamagatsu hooks. Uh, and in this case, I get um, Foro red Gamagatsus by the 100 pack. And uh, they're cheaper to buy that way. So that's, that's the way I, I get them. And I use them. I tie a lot of different rigs with them. So uh, that's what I was using on this particular day. Um, and I go through so much fluorocarbon that um, I always kind of look, you know, what's cheapest. <laughs> so uh, I commonly buy the uh, Seaguar Red, which, uh, you know, it might be a little lower in quality, but it's definitely lower in price. And uh, it's, it's um, a good, a good bargain purchase as far as I'm concerned. I like the red hooks because 
uh, many times. The black ones just aren't on the shelf anymore. But uh, actually, I like them. I do like them. Uh, I read long ago, and, and a lot of fishermen are in agreement that the color red is not easily detected by fish. They can't see the color red for some reason. So, um, you know, I always kind of had it in the back of my mind that y you can't go wrong using a red hook, you know. It could either represent uh, bleeding, because I, I remember Daiichi packaged a hook called the bleeding something or other hook a while back. And, you know, that, that sounded like a good theory. That seemed cool, too. Okay, bleeding, yeah, all right. Looks like a wounded bait, you know, uh, process of natural selection and so on. But um, uh, aside from that, uh, I believe that the color red disappears in, in uh, you know, deeper places where we're fishing for these blackfish. And also I fish for fluke many, uh, many times. I, I also employ the red hooks. You know, uh, this fish is the culmination of 20 plus years of, uh, of experience and, and chasing these fish very passionately and hard. Um, of course, I can't fish as much as I used to and uh, don't run my own boat anymore, but I, I like to try and get out when, when conditions allow me to. And uh, I, I hadn't lost the burning desire to try and catch uh, big specimens. Um, and that's what my annual trip with Kane in Ocean City is all about. Uh, so I had, uh, we had been on this wreck for a little while and I had dropped down a couple baits before this fish and it was a very prolific wreck. And that's one thing about Maryland and Delaware. They drop some massive pieces of structure on the bottom in the form of uh, big boats, tugboats, steel hulls, barges, uh, just amazing pieces of structure to be able to fish on top of. And in my mind, it's the reef building program down there in those states that um, create exactly this fishery and give you exactly this kind of opportunity because it's the ultimate habitat for boss blackfish of this size. Um, I went out there every time I go down there. It's with the specific intent of catching a new personal best. And um, certainly you can expect it on every trip. You know, it just doesn't happen. I mean, sometimes the weather conditions, the, the wind is out of the wrong direction. The fish just won't even bite. You know, uh, some days you land a, a limit, but the big ones just don't feel like chewing that day. Um, you can't go down there expecting double-digit togs. Certainly I've had trips where I did not catch even a double digit, um, much less a personal best. Uh, my personal best was 14 pounds before this, also caught on Captain Kane's boat. And, uh, you know, I had done a few trips down there by this time without scoring such a fish. So I was very happy. Uh, that was January 2013, uh, just before my, my uh, vertebrae fusion surgery, in fact. Um, so again, we had good weather and we had a couple good trips at that time. Uh, so I, again, I was looking to, I was looking for a new personal best. Uh, I had always wanted a 20 pound male because I think that's a fish that just can't be beat on the wall, you know, that's the one you want to mount. And uh, a 20 pound tog is a huge accomplishment for, 
for a, a passionate tog fisherman. You know, that's a serious fish. And especially a male, to find a big male. You know, the males look better than the females. So that was my ultimate goal. But I went down there just hoping for a new personal best, whatever that may be. You know, anything greater than 14 pounds would have been swell. And um, we had already had a, a, a just about 13 pound beautiful male come on the boat already that morning. And um, I felt like I was playing catch up even though I was high hook, you know. I, I was high hook on the keepers. And we were catching some nice fish. We, we had some nice quality fish coming up on the boat. There were some uh, six, seven, eight, I think even one, maybe nine pounder. Uh, we had some nice fish. And um, it, was, it was a slow pick. It was by no means a slaughter. Uh, so, you know, you had to have a little bit of patience. And uh, again, we were on that particular wreck for a little while. And I had dropped down a couple of baits already. And I came up with a small keeper shortly before I hooked this fish. And um, I had the spot worked out. You know, it's, it's an instinct that you get to develop over time and experience. You're able to feel where your sinker falls. If you have to bounce it to get it to fall over the side, just to get in that sweet spot, you can feel the texture of that piece of bottom with your sinker and you know where you got the bite before. So uh, I was repeating the process. I dropped down the same way that I had done before and I felt my sinker lay in just the right spot. This concludes part one of the three-part series. To receive the latest fishing reports, subscribe to the Fisherman's YouTube page. Click subscribe, then click the settings button and check send me updates. You'll now receive notifications of the latest Fisherman YouTube videos and reports. If you're already a subscriber, make sure you've checked send me updates in the settings so you receive the latest notifications.